Hello, Foam Rookers here, and welcome to our special episode. My name is Sean Wasserkrug. With me, as always, is Brian Michaels. And now we bring on the worst films of 2023. Like I said, sometimes this is a very fun episode. Sometimes it's not a very fun episode. It depends on just how ornery Brian and I are when we want to talk <laughs> about these movies. Now, the half-year review, it was not that fun because we lucked out by not watching that many bad movies. I don't, so know if it's, I don't know if it's as much luck as it's by design, because I think both of us were like, you know what? We don't have to watch everything that comes out. And if I see something I know is going to suck and I'm not, or just something I'm not going to enjoy, most times I won't watch it. So it's then true. I don't, so like, I know there are worse films. Like I, I've been putting the title card that we saw because yeah. I know there are probably worse films out there, but there are the worse probably ones that we saw. <laughs> 50 plus movies in theory, like straight to streaming stuff mm -hmm. that is worse than what our list entails. Yeah, but awesome. we aren't getting paid to do this yet. So we're not going to force ourselves to watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey or Knights of the Zodiac or stuff like that because we don't fucking have to. I didn't even realize that there was a Children of the Corn movie that came out this year, but apparently there one that they did. Uh, and apparently it was uh, god awful. We didn't watch that. So as Brian prefaced in the title card, these are the worst films of 2023 that we actually watched. There might be some movies on here that people consider good. You know what? We're probably going to piss some people off. We don't mind pissing people off. <laughs> as long as it's in our our benefit. Uh, strictly put, like we always like the shit on Napoleon Dynamite, and it pisses everyone off every time, and it just fuels us more. So this episode, like I said, we're going over the worst films that we've seen this year. I'm going to preface this like I did in the previous two videos, uh, which is our most surprising and most disappointing, which are out right now. Uh, I'm going to go through my honorable mentions, which Brian doesn't have any. Now, if I say a movie, and we'll use Jurassic World Dominion because that's what we've been using as an example for the other two videos, which would have told – no, nah, it wasn't worst of the year. But <laughs> if I say, you know, oh, this is Jurassic World Dominion, and Brian has it rated higher, he'll say we're going to talk about that later, and then we will wait – and talk about it when we get to Brian's ranking of it. So that way we're not talking about the same movie twice in the same video. So if you guys go and you look at the timestamps, you go, oh, why is one of Brian's or Sean's thing like less than 30 seconds long? It's probably because it's going to be talked about later in the episode. So I'm going to preface that before we start. But like I said, I've got five honorable mentions, so I'll blitz through them uh, as quick as I can. And then we will go into our top 10 worst films of the year that we have seen. And yes, I'm going to say this right now. We have not seen Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. We both just knew that that was going to be a shit film. And we chose not to watch it. So there you go. So if you're expecting us to, to get that, to that, I'm, we're sorry. We're not going to be talking about that movie. So going into my five honorable mentions, uh, this one we talked about on Most Disappointing. So I'm not going to go into great links to, to discuss it because I think we, for the most part, explained as much as we could for for Disappointing. And that was quasi. Uh what more can we say? We were super excited for this film. It's not funny. It was utterly disappointing and depressing to both of us. Um, please do better, Broken Lizard, because we love yeah. you and we want to enjoy you. And it was just, yeah. And like I said, we've already discussed that movie already. Uh, next one um, is going to be a movie that I didn't, I didn't outright hate. So it's one of those things where you and I were very, I wouldn't even say very picky, because how many movies did you end up watching this year? What was your, what was your final count? Uh, 120. You were at 120, and I was at like 92. So to to have to put a movie in my bottom 15 that I didn't really hate, but I, I know it wasn't good, but I didn't really hate, that says that we really, for the most part, picked and choose pretty well. Yeah. But my, my number 14 on, or, or honorable mention is Candy Cane Lane. I didn't hate the movie. I really didn't. I thought I honestly thought it was better than I expected it to be. But we both expected it to be really, really bad. <laughs> so it's not good. It's not awful. It's kind of like the, eh. I think Eddie Murphy is fine in the film. I think Jillian Bell is given more to do than you and I thought she was going to get in the film. Did you ever end up watching this or no? You know, I didn't. I think I was just, I was a little burned out on Christmas films to start with. And then I had also just watched a couple of bad Christmas ones, uh, uh, bad Christmas ones. So I was like, you know what? I I'm kind of done with the whole Eddie Murphy family film thing. Like, yeah. I'm just going to move on and wait for Beverly Hills Cop XLF, dumb title. Uh, and, you know, I'll skip this one. So, 
Yeah, Go ahead. it's the the premise of it or and the the goals of the film, I think are actually really solid. The problem is is that they kept trying to add uh, more of a family dynamic and and subplots for for the the, the uh, children. I just didn't give a shit about them. Um, it's not that they were bad actors. It's just like this is the main plot is intriguing enough that I don't care about this girl trying to get a scholarship because there's this big spoilers obviously for worst films of the year because we don't care they, they try to make this whole stupid subplot that she wants to go to notre dame but like they went to stanford or usc or something like that and that tries to be a whole big subplot and it's like that is not the fucking focal point of this movie like <laughs> no one cares and the 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 son is like really really good at like djing or making music and shit and so his grades aren't that great and it's like they try to force that stuff into the main narrative and it's like i don't care and then you have this other subplot of like eddie murphy getting fired but then it doesn't really like come back in any way and then like they're supposed to be like you make it think like it's going to be like a neighborhood rivalry for this thing but it's like starts but then it just completely dissipates into nothing because the focus point is is him trying not to turn into one of these little mannequins uh, at the end to, to the end of the movie. So it's like there's all these loose subplots just everywhere, and nothing happens with it. And so it's just like, why did we waste the time to to build all these things if we were just going to stay on this one stuff? This one this one plot is good, but it's muddled with all this extra crap. I don't think there's any real bad performances in the movie. It's just the narrative and the plot is everywhere except for where it needs to be and it completely goes off the rails at the end of the movie to the point where you're going i i guess they felt like they needed to do this to make it exciting at the end but it's just messy it is a messy messy ending um so that's why it's at my number four text i didn't hate it it was you know i, I liked it for what it was but it, it is a messy ass film uh going to my next one this is probably the one that i'm gonna get the most pushback from brian on and he even said don't put it on the list i don't want to fight but you know what i'm gonna put it on the list uh Brian warned me, not even Brian, Brian and my mom warned me about this movie before I watched it, saying, it's really good till the end. And that is Leave the World Behind on Netflix. I actually was genuinely kind of excited. <laughs> I was actually genuinely excited for this movie. because. I... Oh, oh, sorry. My what? mind went, no one will save you. I'm like, what the fuck? Sorry. I was like, no, leave well behind. what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> We're leaving that in, by the way. Like, well I'm, like, no. I'm pretty no, that, relaxed. I'm watching you, and I'm like, I don't, why is he so angry by this? No, no, no. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead with this. <laughs> leave the world behind. <laughs> not not no one will save you. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Um, It's late, guys. We love shooting late, and this is what we get. We get funny, kooky, quiet, or, you know, exhausting versions of ourselves. Yeah. Leave the world behind. Julia Roberts. I don't, I actually enjoy her acting, but she seems like someone that is really unlikable on set. I don't know. She just seems really stuck up. She might be a joy. I've heard otherwise, but uh, they kind of, they 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 make her the, one of the most unlikable women in this movie. They they force this like rate like stereotypical racist sub art without actually making Karen. her racist. What's that? She's a Karen. She's a total Karen. But like they like make her racist without outright calling her racist, so you just are frustrated with her character. Uh, freaking Ethan Hawke, who I love, is the biggest like bitch in this movie, and I wanted to like his character because I was like, as it was going on, I was like, I feel like I would be Ethan Hawke in this until it got to like a halfway point. I'm like, nah, Ethan Hawke's just a bitch in this movie. Uh, Mahershala Ali, I think, is actually good in the movie, but it's it's one of those things where it's like. You're being overly ambiguous to to serve the plot when literally just being straightforward and and communicating would have just made things so much easier. You don't have to have this, oh, are they bad? What's going to happen? Are they going to try to kill? You didn't need that. There's already enough crazy ass shit happening in the movie that you didn't have to add that extra layer when a simple conversation and understanding would have worked. Um the the fucking teenage daughter oh my god one of the most annoying characters on in in film this year and even you agreed on that one uh i love friends we've talked about friends on this show when matthew perry sadly passed away i i i if i could have spoiled the ending of friends for this for this girl because of how annoying she was about this uh i would have i 
I've seen her in other performances, and she's nowhere near as bad in those other performances as she is in this. Uh, the the son is an inconsequential character. Like, he's just there, and then he randomly gets hurt or something, and it's just like, okay, Ethan Hawke seems to be the only person that gives a shit about his son. Like, Julia Roberts is out there, you know, dancing and hanging out and doing all this other crap. Uh, I did like how they shot the film. I think, like, the camera angles, it, it was very very cool in that but this movie is all set up and no like no reveal it doesn't give anything it's all setting up it feels like half a movie it 100 feels like because i feel like this is part this is rebel moon the drama this is 100 rebel moon the drama because just when the movie starts to get interesting it ends and kevin bacon i mean good but one, one. I'm not gonna count that first scene. Where he's in the parking lot, but just one scene. Like what the fuck? Like this movie was just a a big tease through the whole damn thing. And then just when you thought we were gonna like, we finally got the exposition that we needed. And was like, okay, now we're getting into it. Nope, movie just ends because the kid found friends. Was that the whole plot of the movie? Was that the kid had to find a friends DVD, and then everything was okay, and then the movie just fucking end. One of the worst fucking endings. This, Julia this, Roberts could have just said, "Hey, I was on the show. Here's how it ends." Exactly. That's the other thing too. She was on Friends. Which, but, and if you look through the DVDs that are in that rack, there's a couple of Julia Roberts movies in there. It's yeah. <laughs> That's it's just that movie. This movie frustrated the fuck out of me because I stopped it halfway through, mainly because I was I was I was falling asleep. And Brian's like, "What do you think?" I go, "Dude, I don't even know if I'm going to go back to this because I don't like any of the characters. I don't care." About any of the characters. I also love that they stood there on the beach and looked at this boat coming at them for like a solid five minutes and then waited till it actually hit land to finally go, oh, let's run. And not go, you know what? It looks like it's Let's just go ahead and start walking off to the side. I it's assume just, it would stop. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't matter. Just be smart. I'm just going to tell myself this was the prologue to this year's uh, Civil War. And I'll just pretend that's what's going on. Is, are you trying? Are you trying to family plan me? Are you sure. trying to do a backdoor pilot? A backdoor sequel? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, my next honorable mention is something that we also already talked about uh, and disappointed. So once again, we aren't going to waste too much time on it. And that is, please don't destroy the treasure of Foggy Mountain. Mm -hmm. Like like we said, uh, when the three leads are just bantering back and forth and hanging out and having fun, it's actually kind of enjoyable and funny to watch. But then they added all this excess subplot. And these other characters, like these two uh, female park rangers who are horrible actresses. They're god-awful. Conan O'Brien is just doing straight Conan, which on a talk show is great. In a movie, not so much. Uh, the, the whole cult thing that they added into it was just... Why? why? It was just it was really stupid. Honestly, you know what the best part of the movie was? That fucking hawk. That hawk was the most enjoyable part of the movie. <laughs> Why is that hawk mean mugging me? He's walking away sassy. Like that stuff was actually funny to me. I when a, when a, when a, when a, when a fake bird was the best part of the movie. <laughs> that's saying something. But like we both said, I'm disappointed. It was their first film. Maybe they'll get another chance. Maybe they'll pull a Lonely Island and make a pop star out of this, and we'll get good. But this movie was not great. And Brian warned me. Brian said, "You're probably gonna hate this film." I didn't hate it, but I also didn't like it either. Uh, my uh, last honorable mention, and this is probably something that Brian's going to go, we're going to talk about this later, because he hated this movie, and I thought it was, eh. Go ahead. Theater camp. We're going to talk about this later. Exactly. I was like, there's no <laughs> way I'm not going to get through this without Brian talking. <laughs> so those are my uh, those are my honorable mentions. So now we're going to go into our top 10 worst films of the year. Uh, Brian, I've talked enough. Go ahead with your number 10. All right. Uh, my number 10 is a movie that I'll get some pushback from some people, but I don't give a shit. Um, and that was Saw X. Um, Didn't see it. The Saw movies, I think, are fine if you watch them just for stupid, the torture porn kind of thing. Just for dumb. I, I think that they they think they're a lot deeper than they are, but they're not. It's like this this convoluted storyline they have going on where they like they move all over the place and they, they you know, retcon stuff all over the place. I'm like, I don't care about any of that. But you know, it's like this time they're bringing back, you know, Tobin Bell as Jigsaw because it takes place beforehand. Apparently they have this whole story, which we didn't tell you. Um, but so, but I'm like, okay, I like the concept of this. It, it seems like it could be at least interesting. You know, Tobin Bell is kind of going to be the 
anti-hero of this it's like he's clearly a bad person but these other people are doing bad things and so he's gonna get it's he's kind of our, well, our protagonist the anti-hero through all the saw because people want to see him torture people it's it's like when you root for freddy krueger yeah yeah but 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 he's he's clearly the bad guy though well yeah but, but in this one it's like these other people they're the ones that deserve to get killed he's like the hero who's he's, he's isn't, killing them isn't, they it like a, isn't it like he's trying to go get surgery for his cancer and it's like one of those manipulation like fake it turns out to be a scam. yeah and then he ends up going back and killing them all um okay. but uh it the kills they had were fine you know they were like any other saw movie but just so much of the movie was spent on this this storyline, and it, and this movie thought it was so deep, and it thought it was being a more serious, dramatic version. And I was just bored to death by most of this movie. So that's all I have to say about that. I I heard so many people saying that this was the best saw since the first one or the second one, and I was just like, I gave up. It's a low bar to start with, but no, there are yeah, several. I, others at least. I gave up on saw. I want to say after the fifth or sixth one, and I used to be one of those people. Not the torture porn thing, because I hate torture porn. It drives me. It's 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 un- unnecessary gore just for the sake of unnecessary gore. But I was one of those people who was like, I love the Jigsaw storyline. Like, I was waiting at one point for someone to go back and re-edit just the the Jigsaw storyline. Uh, I, I can't remember what his name, his real name is John something. Um, Kramer. Kramer. I, I wanted to say Crane, but I knew that wasn't right. I, I was waiting for someone to just go back and re-edit all the scenes from the movies that was just about John Crane from beginning to the point where he becomes just because I was actually interested in that story to see what drove this man to become this. And then you could have added the torch porn stuff after that. But after a while, it, it, you could tell that they didn't care about that story anymore. They just wanted to do more and more over the top gore things. And that's when I lost interest. And so when they did, Jigsaw and uh, Spiral, which I almost watched Spiral, but then I heard it was just utterly garbage. And so I was like, okay, Saw X, like, didn't Tobin Bell's character die, like, in Saw 3 or something? Like, why are we still focused? Because now it's telling a story that supposedly takes place before that. But they overcorrected because now they lean completely into his story. And I'm like, I just don't care about his story at this point. I I used to be one of those people. I'm not anymore. I don't care to watch these Saw films. Uh, So, yeah. Um... My number 10 is a movie that it was it was one of those just like random like trailers that came out. And I was like, is this a straight to streaming? It can't be because of the two leads. It's like, is this getting released in theaters? And you were like, I don't know. And then randomly it was just on Netflix one day. And uh I watched it and now I know why it was just kind of randomly dropped, and that was Hidden Strike. Uh <laughs> Jackie Chan and John Cena. You would think there'd be bigger publicity for this movie with those two leads. Now I know why there wasn't. This movie was dull, boring, and I'm sorry, you have two guys in John Cena and Jackie Chan that are usually really charismatic. And they were both, it looked like they were both talking to walls the entire film. How do you have both these guys? And there's just, there's no chemistry between the two. Through the entire film. Like, I just remember watching this going, Am I just not in the mood for this? Because I just am utterly just bleh through this whole film. Like, the action set pieces weren't exciting. Uh, the story and the plot was just like, who the fuck cares? And then before I knew it, it was it was just over. And I just was like, this this is the most forgettable film I think that I've watched this year of all these shit films. I remember, sadly, I remember all these movies. Hidden Strike, I can't remember anything about this movie. That's how forgettable this film was. I just remember when it ended, I was like, I wasted like an hour and 45 minutes of my time, and I can't remember anything. I really can't. And that's not, you, that's not even a dig. I cannot remember anything about this film. Did you? I know you watched it. Yeah, yeah. This is the one. I, I didn't dislike it as much as you, but I won't, I won't try and claim it's a good movie by any stretch. Um I mean, it is, it is, they at least kept it short. It is only like 90 minute movie. Um, but this the thing is, this movie was made in 2018 and it has sat on a shelf. This is, this was made two years before COVID. <laughs> and this sat on a this shelf. Made, this was made two years before John Cena learned how to act. And that's just it. That's just it. This is before, this is John Cena before he did like Bumblebee and F9 and Suicide Squad and all that stuff. This, is, was when he, Bumblebee, this is when he just had train wreck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of just one of his first, well, 
I want to say protect because he did like the Marine and some other. And, and I think the wall, like the wall, yeah. yeah. So I mean, but actually, he wasn't too bad in this. He was, you know, he's clearly not a polished actor or anything, but no. he was fine. Jackie Chan, I like, but this last section of his career is just kind of made me sad because it's like it's not the Jackie Chan that we knew and love. It's Jackie Chan now who you can tell relies on a lot on stunt doubles and wire work and things like that that he didn't used to do, which I don't blame him. I mean, he's too old to be doing a lot of these things. Yeah. But it's just like it's it's not the Jackie Chan movies that we you know grew up on or whatever. Um, the movie itself, it's like it's a generic action movie. The thing is, it wants to be so many other movies. The first, especially like the first half, it just looks like it wants to be Mad Max Fury Road. Absolutely, yeah. And just the whole way it's filmed and everything, and and the rest of the movie, well, the whole movie is filmed like a like a Robert Rodriguez like a Spy Kids movie because it looks like every scene they're just standing on a green screen, including just standing in front of the desert talking to each other. Okay, I'm trying just, to remember. I'm trying to remember if it's this movie. Is there a fight scene with soap bubbles in this? I don't remember. Like you, I've forgotten most of this movie. I, I could. I, I keep visualizing them fighting with like with like soap around them, like a foam, like a foam thing. I could it's be possible. completely I wrong. Remember. I could be completely wrong, <laughs> but for some reason, I keep remembering a foam thing with this. I don't know. I don't know. I can either confirm or deny. Yeah, I, I don't care enough to go back and check. Yeah, this didn't make my worst stuff, but it, it, I can see why you'd say that. What was your number nine? My number nine. Um, my number nine. Uh, was another Netflix movie. Um, this is uh, another Eddie Murphy movie for me. This is You People. Um, this is one I was kind of looking forward to because it's Eddie Murphy. It wasn't a family film. It's him come back and doing, I think it was R-rated. I don't remember. It's rated R. It was rated R. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, he's going to R-rated comedy, you know, and it's got Jonah Hill, who we've liked in a lot of stuff, like 21 Jump Street and Superbad and a n- number of other things. So he can be really funny. So like, this could be good. And I watch it and it just wasn't funny at all. And the problem, it's mostly Jonah Hill, honestly. Because Eddie Murphy's there, but he's just kind of a supporting character. The whole movie is basically Jonah Hill feeling uncomfortable talking to black people. <laughs> and that's all. It's, it's like I described it in my review as saying it, it, that you're not seeing Get Out when um, Bradley Whitford is saying, you know, oh, if I could have voted for Obama for a third term, I would have. You know, kind of that weird, awkward conversation. Yeah. The whole movie is basically that one joke stretched out over the entire movie. It's just him being really awkward. And it's just it it wasn't funny. It was it was you know disappointing. It didn't quite make my most disappointing list, but it, honestly, it probably should have. But there were other things I had higher expectations for. Um, but yeah, it's, this this just was not good. And I expect so much more of these people, especially. I mean, Eddie Murphy, fine. He hasn't really made a great movie in a long time. But Jonah Hill, he could have done better than this. Come on. Eddie Murphy did do Dolomite is my name, and that was good. There is that. Uh, so, there is that. And then I think the previous one after that was like Dream Girls, which was like, yeah, like a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, it was over a decade ago. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is Jonah Hill and <laughs> he has no chemistry with this girl he's supposedly in love with. And, and you can tell because they made a point of never actually showing them kiss. Apparently they didn't want them to kiss. I don't know if it's Jonah Hill's choice or why don't we talk about behind it? But you know. I'll be talking about a movie later on this list about zero chemistry between a love interest. That because yeah. yeah. But did no, I, I did not see this because all I saw was the trailer, and that was enough for me to go, I don't fucking want to watch this. <laughs> this looks awful. And then I waited for you to tell me that was actually pretty good. And you went, No. And I was like, Okay, good. I not thank God. Because I was I didn't want to see it. Cause every trailer I watch of it goes, This looks just just stupid this looks dumb <laughs> and i'm glad I, apparently i was right my number nine is gonna piss off people and i don't care because this movie's fucking dumb five nights at freddy's i look i love the concept i think the game is actually pretty interesting i got excited when willie's wonderland was coming out because i was like oh it's like a five night at freddy's movie that's pretty sweet it was the worst film of the year when I watched it. It was dog shit. So when I thought, oh, they're actually making an actual Five Nights at Freddy's. That's really, really cool. They're actually getting the creator as part writer for this. I don't hate Josh Hutchinson. I think he's actually a, a underrated actor a lot of times because I think he gets kind of you know put into the side of Hunger Games and he doesn't really get to show show himself uh, like he wants to. Um, the, I, I Matthew Lillard. I love Matthew Lillard. So I was like, this is going to be fun. And the and our chocolates look great. <sighs> this movie is so fucking boring. It is so boring. I mean, if you were going to tell me, hey, Sean, do you care about seeing the same dream redone five or six times over and over and over again? 
with little kids and shit, I've been like, no, I don't want to see that. Why? Because that's Five Nights at Freddy's. And be like, why are you trying to be mean to me? Like, why are you, are you pranking me? Like, the killer animatronic, like, Chuck E. Cheese movie is, is about a, a guy running around in a, a forest in a dream because he can't get over the fact that he was, like, 10 and he lost his brother. Which, first off, quickest kidnapping ever. If that is exactly time frame how it happened. And the kid just was like, okay, bye. It's like just the stupidity of it all. But Josh Hutchinson sleepwalks through this movie. It looked like he didn't want to fucking be there. And he literally sleeps through half the damn movie anyway. He's the worst <laughs> fucking security guard I've ever seen. Dude needs this job so he can support his sis. Also, the whole sister storyline. Why not just make it his kid? Why not make it his, ch his child? Having it be a sister is what made no freaking sense in this movie. It was so frustrating. And then the main villain of this movie wasn't Matthew Lillard who kills children. It was the horrible acting of the aunt who they killed off screen, which would have been one of the most satisfying kills in the movie. And we didn't even get it. They kept trying everything that was so cool about this movie. They just kept neutering it throughout the film. Here's these killer animatronics. Oh, wait, they like to play. Let's take all the threats of them out of it because they like to play with the kid. And then at the very end, when they actually start to be bad again, we're going to make sure that they turn on the bad guy who was not a huge reveal because it was the only other adult in the film and outside of the ant, which if it would have been the ant, I'd be like, oh, that's a twist. But I get their following storylines. I'm not attacking the, the, the subplot of what the actual movie is. It's the execution of it in this movie. It's sloppy. It's lazy. And I actually didn't want to blame the creator. I said, I guarantee you, the creator probably had a really good plan. And then Hollywood came in and said, we have to make this more interesting. We have to do this and this and this. And they just adjusted shit around to make it go with that. I tried to find ways to defend uh, the creator of this. So that way I wasn't shitting all the Five Nights at Freddy's. But this movie was not entertaining. And the movie made a buttload of money. So we're going to get more. Hopefully they make it better. But this movie fucking sucked. And every time I had, I was, I was watching this with Five Nights at Freddy's fans because I don't know the lore. So I'm like, I'm going to ask them questions when this movie ends because I want to make sure that when I review this, I'm not attacking something that's part of the lore that I just don't know. And I'd ask them, well, why is this happening? Why is this happening? They go, uh, I don't know. That's not in the book. That's not in the games or the books. It's, it's just something they did for the movie. Okay, so you're so you're basically helping my argument. <laughs> I, I had a and just like I said with with me getting a bad comment about the killer, I had a fan. Which if you're watching, I appreciate your your comment. I do, but this person wrote a fucking novel comment. You saw it, you went, holy fuck. <laughs> he wrote a novel about Five Nights at Freddy's, trying to defend everything that I was saying against it. And all he did, and you agree with me, all he did was just solidify. All my points in the movie, everything he was like, well, d -d 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 -d. all you're doing is just doubling down on what I said. I appreciate you, dude. I love that you watched it. And I, 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 you took the time to write like 18 paragraphs on my comments. Was it the section. director of the film or something? Do you personally I attack someone? I, I guess, but everything he wrote, I'm like, yeah, I agree. I said that you're trying to defend it. And all you're doing is, is like basically saying in my favor. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, yeah, I know you didn't like it. You didn't. I don't. You don't hate it as much as I do. But. It's not on my hate list. But I, I, I was. It was boring. I did not understand why. Well, although it wasn't a huge. It was a huge success for one week, and then it plummeted. But that's also largely because it was on Peacock as well. But uh, it, it was kind of boring. And, and, and I'm rooting for Josh Hutcherson. I like Josh Hutcherson, which is weird because I hate the Hunger Games movies. I think they're stupid. That's because uh, you well, love Future most Man. Most what's that that's because you love future man i love future man and josh <laughs> Hutcherson. the best thing he's ever done is a movie called detention and uh, you should go see that movie watch that movie instead of this but this this was boring and people are praising the animatronics they kind of suck too it looked like people walking around in costumes i thought they looked good that's the one good thing i had to say about the movies that the animatronics look good but it was but i yeah this this for a, a horror movie did not have any scares in it at all and when it tried to be scary it was just boring so yeah zero scares what was your number eight uh, my number eight is a movie I wasn't even going to watch. I don't remember why I did. Um, it's Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Um, I, I Hold on. I want to preface this before. I put this, I don't know if it was on anticipated or what, 
I I mentioned this movie that I wanted to see this. You verbally bashed me for it. You made fun of me because I wanted to watch it because I was like, oh, it looks like it'd be a Paddington kind of film. That looks really cool. And you were like, you were like, you just gave me so much shit. So I didn't watch it. And then you did. I well, just want to promise that to everybody. This is why I didn't watch it because – but people, you did, though. It's also it's also based on a children's book, and it had to look like it was very much trying to cash in on the Paddington thing. It was very much trying to be this is the next Paddington. It did, it did. Um, and so that's exactly why I didn't want to watch it. I mean, people always describe it with words like cute and adorable. It's like that's not for me. That's not my Brian kind of thing. Brian also has never seen the Paddington films. I haven't. So deal with it. I'm not. I'm not going to say they're bad. I'm just saying I've never seen them. I was like, you can't say shit. You haven't watched them. But you know, but then I heard of this movie, and I found out that a. It's um, the, from the directors of stuff like Office Christmas Party and The Switch and some other fun stuff like that. I'm like, I like these guys. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see that. And then I found out, uh, now there's a musical, which I love, but the songs are by uh, Pasek and Paul, who are the guys who did the songs for The Greatest Showman. The guys who did the songs for a couple of songs for La La Land and, and some other stuff that I've enjoyed. Uh, Dear Evan Hansen, which the songs were not the problem with that movie. Um, I agree with that. I agree with that. So, so I was like, wow, now I'm really interested to see this movie. Just based on those things alone, so I'm, I still wasn't cared, didn't care about the story, but I'm like, I'll watch it. Um, and this movie is just the songs were good. Uh, the problem is the story was just stupid to me. Maybe kids loved it. It is based in children's books, so I'm just not their target audience. I will admit that right up front. Um, and I think the biggest problem was that it had uh, the voice of Lyle was uh, Sean Mendez. Yeah. Which is fine if you're gonna have a, a pop singer be the singer, singing voice. That they also mean the speaking voice. And the speaking voice just sounded kind of stupid. And even when he sang the songs, it didn't feel like he was singing this. Like character was singing the songs. It looked like a character was lip syncing along to pop songs. And it was just like so. The songs, while I like the songs themselves, they didn't really work in the movie for me. Um, the one redeeming quality of this movie for me was a Javier Bardem, uh, who I've never seen him like just sink his teeth and just having fun because he's kind of kind of a villain kind of not um you're a villain or just super serious but he's but he's just like seems like he's just having super fun with it you know he's just being able to play a just crazy character and you don't get to see that a whole lot he's usually a very somber often you know either whether he's villainous or a hero he's always very you know, kind of a serious actor for the most part um so that was fun but otherwise this movie for me was just uh one of the worst ones i saw and it was like i i'm I guess I kind of regret actually watching it after all. <laughs> I never watched it, so I can't, I can't say anything about go. it because you you chastised me so hard for wanting to watch it that I, I was like, okay, I'm not going to watch it because Brian's just never going to let me live it down if I watch this damn movie. No, so, because you love the Paddington movies, and I don't care if you love the Paddington movies. I'm just not going to watch them. I think that's also like why I liked Wonka and you didn't. I mean, you didn't hate it, but I loved Wonka because it was from the people who did Paddington. See, and I so have I heard yeah, you don't. You didn't give a shit. Um, my number eight is a movie that I was actually excited for, and the reason, and this would I would have put this on my disappointed if I hadn't heard how awful this movie was before I saw it. But this is one of those where I saw the trailer and I sent it to you, and I go, "Did you know this was a thing?" And you go, "This looks like it could be fun, or it could be really, really bad." And it ended up being, I think it got a zero on Rotten Tomato, which I know we don't. We normally don't care about Rotten Tomatoes, but a zero is yikes. That is freelance. John Cena's having a rough fucking year, guys. He's having a rough year. He's in two of my top ten worst films. I love – we love Allison Brie. And we like John Cena. And when I saw that they were making a movie together, I was I immediately sent you the screen and go, dude, hell yeah. Because it looked fun. It did. And then I just kept hearing the worst shit about this movie and i was like eventually I, I still want to see it because i find it very hard to believe that allison brie with john cena would be a bad thing i should have known better i watched hidden strike a month earlier and jackie chan and john cena didn't make things work and this did the same this movie is boring and bland john doesn't look like he wants to be there he's giving the one of the most wooden performances even more wooden than fast uh fat, or f9 um, he just looks like he's just going through the motions. Allison Brie is just kind of playing the same character she always plays, but like I I including the one, it's almost like, it's almost like she's trying to take a, a raunchier version of, of Annie from community 
with an included scene with her trying to initiate sex. And then, and then just also trying to be like, you know, super like, like nosy because she, she's a news reporter. And I enjoy watching her on screen. We, we, we love her, but it's just feels very forced. And this whole subplot it, or the, the whole main plot of where they're going, why they're doing it is just kind of just kind of boring after a while. Like it kind of runs its course after 20 minutes. And then you have Christian Slater in the movie and you're like, okay, well, he's a big name. So he's clearly going to be like the bad guy. It's going to be one of those things like, Oh, that coming from the first scene. Yeah. It's like, Oh, he's going to be the bad guy. He's going to, he's going to send John Cena over there and you're going to find out there was a whole big coup and, and Slater's going to be the bad guy. And it's going to end up being a battle between, you know, Slater and Cena at the end. Okay, cool. Nope. Not what happens. Slater's straight line through the whole movie. He's the buddy. He's the best friend. And he's there to save the day at the end of the movie. It's like, what was the point of putting Christian Slater in this? You didn't utilize him yeah. at all. Uh, the, the villain ends up being, uh, oh, what's, what's his name? Costas. Uh, Mark, Martin Zokas. Mark Zokas. I'm sorry. He is bland as shit in this as well. The action is not enjoyable. And they also, like, at the end of the movie, like, there's this big, like, shootout. And, like, Allison Breeze like, recording it on her phone. And she's literally recording people getting shot up and killed and dying. Not to mention... She's showing like people who are doing the killing, who are also supposed to be like military people who are not supposed to have their identities revealed. And she is showing that shit. And I'm just like, they kind of have to cut this up like profusely. Like she literally showed a person like dying in someone's arms and still recording it. And it was just like this whole situation is just it's not fun. It was never fun. There was not a single moment of this where I was like, I'm enjoying this, which sucks because I like both people. Did you ever end up watching this? Yeah, I watched this like opening night in the theater. That oh, which, I feel so bad. Which, first of all, is I, I didn't hate this movie like you did, but I, I think it's it's completely missed opportunity, especially based on everybody involved. Because I was I was I remember we first saw this. You know what this movie is? This movie feels and looks like the kind of straight to video thing you would expect like people to see like Christian Slater's done a lot of straight to video movies. Uh, John Cena has done his fair share of those kind of things, things like that. So I thought, I honestly, you showed me the trailer. I assume this is one of those like, Oh wait, no, this is going to theaters. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. And I, that, I, I, I thought it was going to be like a Netflix movie. Because yeah. when, the day, when the day came out, I started looking for it on streaming. And I was like, where the fuck is it? I thought it came out today. And I was like, Oh, it's in theaters. I'm like, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to see it in theaters. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I went and saw it. And the thing is, John Cena, we've shown he can be really good. Like the Peacemaker, Peacemaker was my favorite TV show last year. Oh, it's great. It's great. I, I love Peacemaker and him and just in Suicide Squad and some other things he's done as well. I've really liked John Cena in. Um, uh, Christian Slater, I've always loved. I think Christian Slater is a ton of fun. And, it, and it show, he was going to be in this. I was, I'm happy. Now, granted, from scene one, I was like, clearly he's the villain. You know, they, they've, it's so obvious. And I'm not sure if it's a good thing that at the end it turned out not to be because like they subverted my expectations or a bad thing because like you said, then what was the point? Exactly. Now, that it's a bad thing because why, did why bother casting movie? Christian Slater in this role if he's not really going to do anything? Which then brings me to my next person, Alice Eve, who's, mm, love Alice Eve. They put her in this movie as John's as John Cena's uh, wife. Like just, just hateful wife. <laughs> and she's just there like at the very beginning. And then I think you may see her one more other time in the movie. And it's like, what was the point of having her in this movie? Yeah, because you like you have her almost like to the point where he's like, like, yeah, your mom already hates me. Your mom hates me. Your mom hates me. And then she's like, I want a divorce. And then like he calls her like two days later and she's like, I love you. It's like, <laughs> did we did we miss a scene? I feel like I missed yeah. a scene here because we went from like, I, I don't want you anymore. I don't want to be with you anymore to please come home safe. I love you. And it's like, what? What? When, yeah. when did that happen? Yeah, so it's just a missed opportunity to talk about it. The director is the guy who did the first Taken. So we know he can do some good action scenes too because the first the first Taken had good action scenes. After that, not so much. Um, but this one, even the action scenes just kind of like, I just, what are we watching? Was, are there's, we watching? That, there's that one scene too on the bridge where Cena like falls out of the car and like lands on the curb and he's selling it. Like he's supposed to be super old and it's bothering him really, really bad. And it's like, is this supposed to be a, like a funny thing? Because he, because once they get off the bridge, he's fine. But it's like they're acting like he's supposed to be like, oh, oh my God, ow. And it's like, you're John Cena. That didn't hurt like at all. Like this honestly felt 
like back in the early 2000s when WWE was starting to make their own movies like The Marine and shit. This looked like this felt like one of those films where it's like, oh, we'll get we'll get like, you know, a C to B list actors like Robert Patrick, who I love, by the way. And we'll put them in this with, with a wrestler who's still kind of learning how to act. And and it'll be fine. You're going to go to the movie knowing it's not going to be great, but you might enjoy it because you're like, hey, that's John Cena. That's what this felt like. And they don't do that anymore. Yeah, if, you told, if you told me this movie was also made back in 2018 and set on a shelf, I would have believed you. Yeah, but it, it wasn't, though. That's the problem. John Cena's better than this. And every one <laughs> of this movie is better than this. Yeah. Uh, what was your number seven? Uh, my number seven, I imagine, is on your list, too. I'm, I'm surprised it would at least get an honorable mention. Um, speaking of missed opportunities and wasted potential, uh, is Shotgun Wedding. That is my number seven. Oh, so, so we'll just talk about it now. Yeah, exactly. It's both our number seven of the year. Okay. <laughs> so Shotgun Wedding, a uh, movie with Jennifer Lopez, who I actually generally enjoy, um, and Josh Jumel, who, again, I, is I not a favorite actor or anything, but I usually like him. Yeah. Um, it seems to have a funny premise to it. Um, it's directed by Jason Moore, who I, I know he did one of the Pitch Perfect movies. Uh, he did first week perfect as well as Sisters and some other stuff. So you can do some comedies. And this is supposed to be like an action comedy thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like, you know what? This is this looks like it could be fun, at least from the concept. Of course, yeah. then it sits on a shelf. It was supposed to come out like last year. Well, it was also supposed to have, wasn't it originally supposed to be Army Hammer? It was Army Hammer originally, yes. And then it was supposed to be someone, uh, or was it supposed to be Ryan Reynolds, and then it went to Army Hammer, and then it went to Demel? I don't know if it's ever Ryan Reynolds has ever confirmed for it. He's like, I think they were, they were trying to get him for it or something like that. Yeah. But I do know it was Army Hammer at one point, and then it ended up being Josh Jumel. And then like after the movie was made, it, it never got a release date of last year when it was supposed to have. And then we find out, oh, it's going to be coming straight to uh, Amazon Prime. And I'm like, okay, that's not a good sign. And it wasn't and it was like, like one of, it was like one of the first movies of the year, too. Yeah, and it wasn't like Coyote versus Acme or something where there was like there was for a tax write-off and then somebody else picked it up. And this is one they actually just said you know what, we're just not going to put this in theaters. Let's just sell it off to somebody over here to do it. So that wasn't a good sign, but we like the people involved and we watched it. And I thought maybe it won't be great, but it will still be at least enjoyable. And this movie was just boring as shit. It's like, it, the, the worst part is, it's like, it's an action comedy that doesn't have great action and isn't funny. I don't think I legitimately laughed one time in this entire movie. It is one of the most annoying movies of the year one of the most like uh, annoying cast because there's first off jennifer coolidge oh my oh god i could bang my head against the wall if i didn't have to listen to her talk anymore remember when we actually were like okay with her and now all of a sudden like she's everywhere and it's just the most grating thing. well you know what it was when i was okay with her it was like back in the american pie days exactly she was doing was her so sultry posted. sexy milf thing but now once she started doing her annoying thing which is pretty much legally blonde and beyond yeah, it was just like, oh, stop talking, stop talking. And then, and then they gave her that fucking commercial, like the holiday commercial. And I was just, yeah. like, I want to punch the person who who booked this. Yeah, I don't but, have anything else more to say about it. So go ahead. Uh, but this is uh, seriously, most of this movie is the the whole wedding, like family and whatever, like standing in a pool, being held hostage, and these are the most annoying people ever. I was begging for the for the bad guys to shoot them. So I didn't have to listen to him anymore, especially Jennifer Coolidge. Jennifer Lopez, who we enjoy, granted, looks fucking amazing in this movie, but when does Jennifer Lopez not she look does. amazing in any movie? She's unlikable. How did you make J-Lo unlikable in this movie? Josh Jamel just kind of looks like a doofus through this, and you kind of was like, you're dating her because she's really fucking gorgeous, not because you guys are compatible, because she is just... You must like turn her on mute whenever she talks because outside of her beauty, Jennifer Lopez is not someone I would ever want to be around. She's one of the most annoying characters in this. Not as bad as Coolidge, but everyone in this movie outside of Dumel, I just wanted to see them die. It because they were just I just wanted them off the screen. And like I said, the action lack thereof. And then it's like and you have the big twist where you find out one so who's like who else is really involved in it. And it's like we saw that coming three miles. Exactly. And then and then they just kept doubling down on it. It's like I don't care. And then it was like one of those things where it's like, oh it's rated R probably for the language. And then just all of a sudden like out of nowhere needlessly gory, like blowing body parts off of people, you're like 
Oh, okay. Like, wow. Random. They don't have a problem with it, but it didn't really fit in their tone. It, of the didn't, rest of the it didn't fit in the movie at all. I was just like, I was just like, take, like did, did that really just happen? Like, okay. that Whatever, man. Like, dude. But this movie is, was, seriously, this, this is the most annoying film of the year. Yeah. Surprisingly, because this was like my number one for, I think, the whole, for almost the whole first half of the year. Um, except and, until one particular movie took that spot right away. How this finished seventh? Because <laughs> it should have been so much lower. Um, this movie is so goddamn annoying. Uh, I hated this movie with a fiery passion. So that was um, both of our sevens. Uh, yes, yeah, so go six, to your six. I think is also somewhere in your list. Maybe six. Who knows? Uh, Exorcist Believer. You know what? It's my five. So let's just fucking talk about it. We'll just talk. And about then it. I'll go. Yeah, let's we'll just go ahead and go with it. So the original Exorcist uh, is not a scary movie. Um, it's not. It's incredibly overrated. It's one of the most overrated movies of all time. Um, Absolutely. We're going to say it, and uh, uh, we don't care what you think if you're watching us. This is not news because we've said this multiple times before. Yeah, absolutely, we have. Um, I think at some point I've seen at least one or two of the other Exorcist movies just in passing. Don't even remember anything about I them. Say, I, I know I've seen them. But I've seen all of them. But I could, outside of like that one hospital sequence where the person's coming at them like because that's an iconic scene that people blow mm -hmm. up proportion i can't remember a single frame of any of the other movies i will yeah. say this i will defend the exorcist on one thing it's it had a tv series that went i think one maybe two seasons gina davis right yes that was good i liked that show and then they canceled i'm like you just canceled the one good thing the exorcist <laughs> had see i didn't watch it because it was the exorcist so maybe i should go back and check it out it, i enjoyed it I enjoyed yeah. it. So I'll check it out. Like, so, uh, this. But this movie, it's it's okay. So the trailer, I, I, I knew it was the Exorcist. I'm like, oh, really? But I'm like, you know what? The trailer kind of intrigued me. It, it was it was a well done trailer. It it, it looked good. Um, you got Leslie Odom, Odom Jr. starring yeah. it, who who we like. Um, I didn't really know any of the other people in it. It's, uh, I mean, Ellen Burstyn obviously makes a makes a appearance. Um, I got I got something to say about her. But go go on. Yeah, and you, you have a. Uh, uh, Country music star Jennifer Nettles is in there too, but <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. Um, but so I, I went to see this movie. I'm like, you know what? Wait, 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 was she was she the mom? Was she the Christian mom? Yes. I love that they made her look so bland and plain, but then as soon as it came to extras time, they made her look sexy. She's like, I'm putting on a tank top and a ponytail, and you went from like a four to an eight at the worst possible fucking moment of the movie. <laughs> well, she knew she was going to be, you know, on, on TV and stuff. So she yeah, uh, I don't know, but, but I watched this movie and I'm sitting there hoping for it, and it starts off slow. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You're starting off with this; they're slowly building the story. I'm like, slow and slow and slow, and then finally the girls get kidnapped, and like, okay, and I'm still kind of slow, and they come back, and it's still kind of slow, and and then they and then they start doing well. I'll let Sean talk about what he's already talked about with how they try to scare you, but yeah. then it again it never really gets scary and by the end i was just like just end already i just don't even care anymore I, it's ending. just exactly what i should have expected from the exorcist the go sean oh, it's <laughs> uh, so so um ellen ellen bernstein burston yeah burston burston you want to talk about literally like uh oh god what is the word i'm thinking of it's late so my brain's not thinking um tricking the audience into thinking this movie was going to be bigger than what it was because if you go back and watch the trailer, she's in a lot. Of yeah, they wanted you to think they were doing like Halloween 2018 with Jamie Lee Curtis. Exactly. They're bringing her back. Exactly. They bring her in and, oh, uh, Reagan is, um, you know, they don't talk anymore. And then the demon's like, Reagan's in hell and all this shit. No. It, they make it look like she is such a focal point of this movie. Mm -hmm. She's in like three minutes tops. Three minutes of this movie. Most of her scenes is the trailer because they dispatch they, they dispatch her right when she comes in, and then they try to tag on Reagan at the end of the movie with Linda Blair, and it's just like, don't you're like you're throwing this out there for the people who really came to see this and you didn't deliver. So like, let's we'll throw them a bone. We'll throw this thing at the end of the movie. It's like, no, fuck you. You don't get not that I care because I don't like the first. It's just like just like Brian, but even I'm like, screw you. Like, don't, don't, don't try to do that shit. But yeah, that, and I, I mentioned this in the, in the disappointing, because like I said, the trailer looked good. It tricked me too. Cause I was like, oh shit, am I actually going to like an exorcist movie? Um, 
but yeah, it's not scary at all. And I figured, oh, two girls uh, that are possessed, that actually might be intriguing because it's double the exorcism. This might be going insane. And it's not. It's bland as shit to the point where I told, like said and disappointed is that they had to use quick cut creepy images to try to make you feel uncomfortable. And I'm sorry. If you have to show a random like demon, like saggy boobed old lady demon like coming at you to scare you and that was never in the movie but it's a quick cut thing like like images from the ring you're failing as a director you're failing as a screenwriter because you are not doing your job by making what the actual movie is about which is an exorcism, exorcism of two women uh, two girls and you could do so much stuff the 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 once like scary moment you had is when they fucking killed the priest who was who I love like, is outside his car, being like, oh, I can't do anything. Then he finally comes through the door like he's the fucking hero. Like, I have arrived. And he's like, don't touch him, don't touch him. I will touch them. He's like, you dumbass. Like, you just did the one thing you told him not to do. Because you think you're king shit. Dude died right away. And I was like, so that was for nothing. Like, because they built him walking into the room like he was here to save the day. And then he gets fucking bitched out in two seconds. But the whole, the actual... The, the, the twist ending or the, the, the crazy ending was lame as shit. And it was a cop out. It was such a cop out. If you really wanted to double down, you would have killed both girls. You would have killed them both. And you would have been like, sometimes exorcisms don't go the way you think. Sometimes you fucking lose. And you know what happened? You know what movie did that? Exorcism of Emily Rose. Sometimes you just fucking lose. And they could have done that. But no, they had to have a somewhat of a happy ending. But even then, the very ending was it was like, is she clear though? Do we know? Nope. Let's leave it ambiguously open ended for a sequel that's never gonna happen. That's not happening. Exactly. It this movie sucked. And it was it was edited really poorly, like it was quick cuts and just shot awkwardly. Like I was just watching, I was like, that is just a weird way to cut the scene. Like, why are you like I don't normally point that shit out. Brian's the one that usually points that crap out. I usually like kind of just let that shit go, but even I was going, this is just an awkward way to shoot a scene. Like, why are we doing this? And then, like I said, one of the worst extra performances of the year, this doctor, I just horrible. I laughed out loud at this one performance. He's only in the movie for like 30 seconds, but it is, it is so bad that I was just like, I know the rest of the movie is going to be crap now because they let that stay in the movie. And if they let that stay in the movie, the rest of the movie is not going to be good. Uh, yeah, that movie was dog shit. Um, your sixth. Well, I'm, yeah, I'll go back now to my sixth. Uh, my sixth is a movie that Brian knew was going to be on my list because I was verbally, verbally, verbally bashing this film before it even came out <laughs> because I, I've never wanted to love a franchise, but yet hate it with such a fiery fucking passion. And that's Meg to the Trench. And I see Brian smirk. I love sharks. I love shark movies. Jaws, one of my favorite movies of all time. The Meg, where Brian and I are at odds at this, The Meg, I thought was three-fourths of a really good movie because it took itself seriously. Because you know what? This is based on a book. And the book took itself seriously. And then in the final act, which is what Brian loves, is the when they said, you know what, let's make this a fucking schlocky sci-fi fucking movie. And let's do every cliche you could fucking possibly do. That's the Meg, and I fucking hated it. Meg 2 looked like they were going, hey, hey, hold my beer. We're gonna fucking quadruple down on this some bitch. And you know what? I was like, you know what? It made a lot of people happy when they did that. I'm still gonna check it out. I'm probably gonna hate it. But I'm going to check it out. Here's the thing. They followed the same formula that they did in the first movie. Three-fourths of the movie, they took it seriously for the most part. And then in the last half, they went off the rails and schlocky as hell. The problem is, in Meg 1, the first three quarters, even though Brian said it was boring, I found very interesting. I thought the characters were interesting. I thought the story was interesting. And I was all invested in the characters and everything. Meg 2 couldn't give a rat's fucking ass about anyone in this damn movie. You had this, 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 uh, the, the one, like, what was it? They killed the, the fucking mother off screen. 
So like it was just like, oh, she didn't want to sign back on for the sequel, so she did. And mm-hmm. oh, here's the daughter. Here's the cute. Remember the cute daughter that everyone loved in the first movie. She's grown up now. She's not as cute anymore. But we're, just but we're gonna her- focus the entire movie on her. Exactly. We'll just make her really, really fucking smart. And Statham now has to be a dad. And that's that story. Oh, she has this crazy fucking uncle who just wants to fucking die just for the sake of fucking dying. Like I'm gonna go swim in a shank with a Meg because I have a little clicker button and the Meg won't eat me. Because that works, but it does in the fucking movie. And this fucking uncle, I think there's like four or five times in the movie that he just tries to kill himself. And Statham has to save him. And it's just like, just let him go. Like, after a while, just let him go. Just let him him go, man. The the one good redeeming quality in this movie, they shelved until the third act, which was was Curtis. I love that guy. And he is just kind of like stationed off off camera for like most of the film until the very end but then they saddle him with what's his name who they decided i'm gonna make him fucking jason Bourne in this one dude was a little bitch who couldn't fucking swim in the first movie so in the meantime we're gonna make him be like this ethan hunt james Bourne motherfucker who now can fight and shoot guns and do all this shit because the actor obviously wanted to do more than just be you know a, a bitch comedy actor and it just was fucking awful. Then you added dinosaurs to it, which I was like, that could work. But they're the dumbest and ugliest looking fucking animals. You add this twist mid movie about the bad guys, which I'm like, no one fucking cares. Why do we have bad guys in this movie? This is a movie about a giant fucking shark or sharks that are trying to attack and kill people. We don't need like this evil corporation bad guy shooting at you scenes. No, why? Cause Jason Statham needs to be able to kick people in the face because he can't kick a fucking sh- shark in the face. He can do a lot of things to a shark, but he can't kick him in the face. So you got to have someone that he can actually fucking fight. One of the dumbest fucking scenes in this movie <laughs> that made me literally scream at the TV. Statham is charging full speed on a, on a fucking, um, uh, words jet ski jet ski thank you i want to say motorboat but that's not right he's charging full speed trying to go after this meg okay anyone who's watching this this is a giant fucking shark against a dude not jason statham because people don't know jason statham but it's a dude going after a meg the meg should win what's the bad guy do i'm gonna shoot at jason statham and stop the shark from eating him so that way he kills me in five minutes because that fucking makes sense let the fucking shark do the work, dude. The shark's already going after the guy. Nope, let me shoot at Jason Statham because logic. This was the dumbest fucking movie. It's and let's, I won't even. Then there's the whole holding your breath for pressured water, like what twenty, however many fucking. Oh, that was so fucking dumb. Whoo! This movie pisses me the fuck off so fucking bad. Um, let me guess, you loved it. I know you didn't love it though. No, no, I did not. Honestly, uh, if I did, uh, uh, if I did uh, runners or honorable mentions, this would have been on the list. That's what I considered so for it. It's so fucking. Um, and I knew you would hate it because oh, it's so like stupid. yes, because yes, the first one I thought the part I enjoyed of it was when they went kind of just kind of fun schlocky, you know, shark movie at the end. This one they decided to double down on that, and so I'm like, oh, Sean's really gonna hate it now. Um, the, they the first the half same of the movie, fucking dog back from the first movie. How the I first half of this movie, movie was boring as shit. Um, and even and even for Sean, because I, I, besides the scientific inaccuracies, of holding your breath and oh all that kind of stuff, God. it was just boring. They're focusing on this girl that we don't care about. Um, but then even once it gets to the slocky stuff, they add in those weird little dinosaur things, and it's just like it goes over the top, and you're just like, this is just a mess. And I, it's, it's one of those movies like they should just never made the sequel. And they added a squid. Don't forget the giant fucking squid. Oh, I have forgotten. I've forgotten more for this movie, honestly. I actually had no problem with the fucking squid, but it, oh God, it's fucking horrible. Okay, so I, that was my six. I already gave my five. So you go with your five and then your four. Uh, my number five is not going to be on your list because you liked this movie, I think. And this is uh, Haunted Mansion. I did, I did, I did like it. You did like the movie. <laughs> I did like um, Haunted Mansion. I did not. Um, the Haunted Mansion, the ride is whatever it is. The 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 past versions they made with with uh, Eddie Murphy wasn't great. It was just kind of eh, whatever. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it, was, it was again Eddie Murphy in his kids movie phase. Yeah, they made like a Muppet version for Disney Plus. That was kind of eh. I'm like this one though. I mean, look at this cast of great people. This one will at least be better than those. I was wrong. It wasn't. Um, 
like he's Stanfield, blameless. He does great in this job in, in this movie. In most he movies, went him, way too hard in this movie. There's so many times I'm going, like he, you didn't have to go so hard. It's a Disney movie, dude. Like he's going out there for like a fucking Oscar in this shit. But but he's also the only person that made it watchable for me. It's I like loved, I, thought, I loved him in this movie. I thought he did a great he job in this great. movie. I wish the movie was just more just about him. He was but so no, good. Rosario Dawson, who kind of seems like she's just there for a paycheck. You have uh, Tiffany Haddish just being Tiffany Haddish. You have Owen Wilson just being Owen Wilson. Um, Danny Dan Vito doing his usual Danny Vito thing. Uh, then for no reason, there has to be deleted scenes, this movie, because they have Jared Leto as, uh, what do they call him, the man in the hat or whatever his name is. Yeah, um, like the, 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 the guy or whatever. Something but like it's that. like, you never actually see Jared Leto as this guy. You see a drawing of Jared Leto as this guy. And you see shot like CG shots of him like as the ghost where you can't. I mean, if you know it's Jerry Letter, you might be able to make out that it's kind of got the same features. But there was no reason to have him in this movie because he does not appear in any scenes as himself. his best performance ever <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't have to see him. <laughs> um, But so it's like there has to be deleted scenes. There has to be a reason they cast him in this role that, where he did nothing. So th that's pointless. Um, But the movie is just I, I was bored by this movie. I didn't think it was funny. Uh, and even even by you know just you know Disney family movie standards, I just thought that this just missed the mark. But that's just me. I said I thought this movie was fun. I actually liked the Danny DeVito was Danny DeVito and Owen Wilson was Owen Wilson. I normally can't stand Tiffany Haddish, but I actually didn't mind her in this one for some weird reason. I liked everyone in this movie. I liked the cast. I liked how how the ghosts looked in the movie. I think visually it looked really good. I really enjoyed the young actor. I uh, can't remember his name off the top of the head, but I actually thought he was really, really good. Um, like I said, Lakeith Stanfield, he's he was acting like Vin Diesel in the Fast and Furious movies. He thought this was going to be his Oscar role because he went fucking hard, except that he's actually a good actor where Vin Diesel's Vin Diesel. Um, Lakeith, Lakeith was 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 great in this movie. I, I thought it was fun. I enjoyed also the little like cameos from like Winona Ryder and Dan Levy. Uh, I wish they were in it more because I saw them. I was like, oh! <gasps> And then they were gone. And I was like, again, it's like uh, they were called in a favor. Or like, so why would don't? Yeah, why would they be in? This yeah, they need to be in this a lot more. I had fun with this movie. I'm not going to defend it too hard because I know how much you didn't like it. But I, this almost made my most surprising because I was like, I expected it to be shit because everyone shit on this movie. And I waited <laughs> for it to go on Disney Plus, and I watched. I was like, I, it, I must have watched. Everyone must have watched a different movie than me because I actually had fun with this film. Um, but yeah, uh, what was your number four? uh my number four you know netflix does make good movies we swear just a lot of them are also making our worst of lists uh this year uh, another one and sean didn't like as well as family switch my number four there we go wow we don't rare we i don't i have a good feeling we're both gonna have the same number one we have hit really close together this <laughs> so yeah, family cool. switch uh directed by mcg you like mcg go watch well, fast I, I, I i like mcg yeah everybody go watch fast lane good tv show um yeah but he's made some good movies I like as well. Uh, Family Switch is, it's, you know, a body swap movie, which those are a dime a dozen. Brian was um, so excited for this movie. But there are movies like, you you know, The Change Up came out. People, for some reason, don't like that movie. It's a it's a really funny movie. They did kind of a new take on the family on the body swap movie. They do something new with it. It's fun. This one does nothing new with it. Um, in the well, first... They did, they did swap a baby and a dog. <laughs> no, they that swapped you. No, they swapped two CG entities. Is what they did. Yeah, that is very true. The <laughs> CG. Oh my god, it was so bad. So both the baby and the dog. It's, we're talking Ali McBeal. Ba it's, baby it is dog. atrocious how bad the CG is on it's the baby. It's bad. This is that. But but I mean, it, this is a movie where you know, five minutes in, or even just read the plot synopsis, and you can you can do what I did, which is predict every step of this movie from beginning to end and it follows everyone's step check. Yep. 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 And everything that we thought would happen happened exactly in order we thought would happen. And they do nothing original with it. Um, you know, I, I like the people in it, you know, Jennifer Garner at Helms, yeah. these people, I enjoy these people as actors, but it's just them being in this boring, bland formula story. And so it's like, you don't really care about it. There's so much nonsensical stuff to, you know, we've gone into this before but about things, the soccer game and there's things with the, <laughs> and, and, and I know Sean, you've talked about how it's just like, it has no sense of time. Cause it just jumps to the next yeah, scene. The concept of time the movie like, is forgotten. It's just like scene after scene, after scene, after scene, like no actual connective tissue. And it was just such a disappointment because it's just bland and boring and formula and they did nothing new with it. 
this is also supposed to be a Christmas movie, but outside of the first scene, I don't recall seeing really anything Christmassy about this movie at all. No, no, this is a movie that just kind of happens to take place at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. This is this this and, and another movie that we're going to be talking about, probably our number one, is proves that you can have a phenomenal cast, but if the script and the dialogue and the direction doesn't ha- help you, then the then the stars in the movie are not going to save it. Because I agree, I don't hate Jennifer Garner. I love Ed Helms and the two kids. I have liked them in other stuff, and also the neighbor we like in Army of the Dead and Army of Thieves, like. The cast is a solid cast through this movie, but there's there's so much just like you like you said predictable shit. There's only one thing in this movie that they didn't do that I was that I was predicting, which was uh, I thought the kid was gonna still get his scholarship, and that didn't happen. Um, that was the only thing. So if anything, everyone got the, what they wanted except for the son. Well, no, the son got the girl, but he he didn't get his cool that he's been working so damn hard for. But yeah, this movie is. As far as we know, they left un- unanswered threads. So. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, this movie, like I said, no concept of a time. Uh, apparently, schools don't care where kids are half the day or stuff like that. Um, they're also, like I said, the soccer game. The announcer, the color, you know, the announcers in the game, they, they care about more what's happening in the stands than they do in the actual soccer game. Uh, also, the entire city spends their Christmas Eve at a school dance. It wasn't even a school dance. It was like a, a it was like a perf- like a con- like a concert for old yeah, people. Yeah, like concert at the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then you do like that very very like it was very eighties where it was like Jennifer Garner goes or the the daughter as Jen- as Jennifer Garner goes and does this presentation and then they go to the concert. But then like everyone at work, like the boss and like all that, they all go show and, like, up at the, the concert people, for no reason. And the people that they're trying to like sign to this promotion, like, they all go there to like say, hey. I like what you did here. I'll sign. Hey, you, you're fired. That guy did nothing wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. Like in a normal movie, he would have been like, oh, I hid the plans or I undertook it or I did it. He didn't do anything wrong in the movie. He just got fired for no fucking reason. Uh, this you movie- know what, if I, the more I think about it, if I didn't know better, and this is giving too much credit, I'd almost think that this was a spoof of body swap movies. Especially because they literally name like all these body swap movies in the film, including yeah. 13 going on 30, yeah. which is never Garner. Uh, also a nonsensical dance sequence, just to have a dance sequence in the movie. Yeah, because the choreography. Yes. <laughs> because it's Jennifer Garner and she always has to have a dance sequence in every movie she's in. It is lazy, <laughs> stupid at, as hell. My girlfriend came in while I was like, I think I had like 20, 25 minutes left in the movie. She's like, what are you watching? I go, a movie that I, Brian and I were hoping was going to be good, but it is one of the worst films of the year. And she was asking questions, and I was answering. And she's like, "This is fucking stupid." I go, "You just walked in, and you've already figured that out. I've been here for forty plus minutes, and I and I am still watching this stupid shit. It is awful. It is, it is so awful." And like I said, Brian, when he heard this movie was coming out, he's like, "It's a body swap Christmas movie with this cast. It's actually it might be good." And I was like, "Maybe. I don't know." It's going to Netflix. That doesn't sell me on it. And it's like, nope, this was fucking awful. Um, I, my number, you, you go ahead with your number three because we both had four. So go with your number three. Uh, my number three is a movie that you haven't seen. No one's seen it. No one's heard of this movie. Uh, this is a movie that kind of went straight to, uh, actually, it's on Hulu now. I think it was straight to Hulu. I think it was like a straight to VOD movie called The Haunting of Queen Ma- Haunting of the Queen Mary. Um, it's supposed to be like a supernatural tale. Uh, what got me interested in this is stars Alice Eve, which you've already established that I like Alice Eve for many reasons. Um, Joel Fry, whom there's a TV show called Plebs, which you have not watched this TV show. It is freaking hilarious. Uh, it think of like workaholics uh, or or something like that, but in like ancient Rome. <laughs> it's I'm le- it I'm, I'm looking it up while you're while you're talking. Yeah, I, I think you will enjoy it. It's very, you have very much the same uh, sense of humor as I do. Um, but Joel Fry, he was he's also like the best friend in uh, Yesterday, but he's, he's done some movies. Um, but I like those two. And it was like a supernatural thing. And I'm like, I'll check this thing out. Uh, it's 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 supposed to be this horror supernatural movie. And it's just it's again, it's just boring. It's pointless. This is a trend. I'm not saying anything new. So I'm not gonna say a whole lot about this movie, especially because it's so, so obscure. Um, they do make like a there's a good like creepy atmosphere to this thing. But they just didn't do anything with it. It didn't hold my interest. And, and by the halfway point, I had already checked out. And it was just kind of all over the place. 
and it, and it went on i want to say it was like over two hours long and i'm like this this movie just needs to end um but that's all i have to say about that i do know that guy he was in cruella oh that's and right he was in cruella. and he was actually pretty good in it i actually enjoyed him in it yeah. yeah i never saw this movie so i have really no input to no, give no, nobody did but it was just it was one of those like i, I usually try to leave off really obscure movies off my list because and only you don't talk about ones people did but this one was just kind of so bad i'm like you know what i gotta put this on my list all right my number three you have seen i'm shocked it's not at least an honorable mention because it's so fucking bad i'm sorry dishonorable mention my girlfriend's like why are they honorable if they're bad movies i'm like you're right they're dishonorable <laughs> but um this movie i like the four leads outside of this the main lead can get super annoying, but there's one way that you and I really love them in. But this movie is bad. This was on Netflix called The Outlaws. Uh, not the outlaws like criminals, like the in-laws, but they're the outlaws. Uh, this movie is starting um Adam uh Divine. Divine, because I always say Adam Devine, which is Maroon 5. Um Nina Dubrov, uh uh Pierce Brosnan, and um is it Ellen Ellen Bernstein? Barkin, Barkin, Barkin. Barkin. Um, I like all of them. I do talk about a, uh, Adam Sandler situation. And Brian knows what he mean when I mean, when I say Adam Sandler situation, which is Adam Sandler always puts himself in movies opposite someone fucking way out of his league. Gorgeous. So he can kiss them. Adam and Nina. No, that's not a thing. I know that they work together on the final girls, which we love. No, I don't buy them together for a second in this whole fucking movie. There's no chance in hell Nina is with Adam because Adam is playing Adam, which is a very annoying fucking character in most films. Now, if he's with other people that work with him, like Zac Efron and Mike and Dave need wedding dates or workaholics, then Adam can kind of be dealt with in a way where he's enjoyable, but borders on that thin line between annoying and actually hilarious like he was in Jexy. He's so blatantly stupid and obnoxious in this movie that makes you wonder if Nina has a like like a special uh, disability that makes her not understand because there's no believability in this movie that she would be with with Adam's character. And Pierce Brosnan and and Ellen Barkin, they're fine in the movie, but the movie is so just it's ruined by Adam's performance. But the movie also is incredibly like simplistic and dumb at the same time like just the like they're they're trying to hunt down uh these bank robbers which quote unquote <laughs> hello it's pierce and ellen and the cop is just a moron through this movie like there's just and like even even like the uh this kind of does the same thing with like shotgun wedding where it's like it's a comedy it's an r-rated comedy and then all of a sudden it gets real gory at the very end for just no reason and it's just so, so out of the blue. You're like, whoa, whoa. Why did we all of a sudden just randomly just all of a sudden like go like dark with, with the kill here? But it's it was, I was so annoyed through this whole movie. Uh, like at one point, like they have Adam dressed up like fucking Shrek for way too long. And <laughs> it is just it wasn't funny. For the first time he showed up and it wasn't funny like 10 minutes later when he was still dressed up as Shrek. This movie was annoying as hell. It was so annoying. And the only reason why this is rated higher than Shotgun Wedding is because Josh Dumel was actually trying in Shotgun Wedding and Jennifer Lopez is still Jennifer Lopez. But The Outlaws was fucking awful. Apparently you liked it enough to not put it. Well, it didn't make my 10 worst of the year, but it, it, I, I just looked at it and it's rated like my number 84 four movie of the year right next to past <laughs> or five nights at freddy's so and, and i would agree this this feels very much like a adam sandler netflix movie because it's like it, it, a he casts himself with the hottie and b like adam sandler a little bit of adam divine goes a long way um he yeah. can be funny doses. in movies doses doses yes we can like like in the final girls he can be a funny guy he made a movie um i think it was a netflix movie called um when we first met with alexander daddario i really liked that movie um so i mean he can do good here though he does get to get to being too much of full adam, adam. Full, yeah, adam. You get full adam especially like the strut costume things like that um but i mean it, it, him and i like pierce brosnan i like ellen barkin well it shouldn't do much anymore uh michael rooker is in this movie um yeah he's he's the doofus cop and i was like yeah. oh michael rooker 
And I was like, oh, yeah. You know, and, and I honestly had kind of high hopes for this movie, but it 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 wasn't good. Um, like I said, didn't hate as much as Sean, but it was, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was your number two? Uh, my number I'm, two. I'm interested in what your number two is because I know what your number. We we I'm already gonna split. We have the same number one. Nope. Do, my number really? two is Fool's Paradise. You found something worse. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm, well, so I, we're not talking about this one yet. So what's your number two? My my number. Okay. So I mean, we'll, we'll tag team this because yes, Fool's Paradise is my number one worst from the year, which breaks my heart so badly because I wanted that movie to be so good. Um, number two is equally, it's equally as bad as Fool's Paradise. Here's the big difference. And the reason why Fool's Paradise takes the number one spot over this, because they're equally as bad, but one, Fool's Paradise has an all-star cast with it. And number two, this movie knows its target audience. It knows it's stupid. It knows what it's doing and it's doubling down on it. Whereas Fool's Paradise is trying to be a good movie. It is thinking it's a good movie. It is thinking it's doing everything right and it's doing everything wrong. This movie knows what it's doing and it's doing it correctly. We are just not the target audience for it. And that is Good Burger 2. Good Burger 2, I was at that age when all that was on. And I and I like, you know, watching Good Burger, you know, oh, home of the Good Burger, take your order. I enjoyed that shit. And when the first Good Burger movie came out, I was kind of a little too old for it. But, you know, it was like, yeah, it was, for what it was, it was fun. It's not a good movie. I know it's not, but I enjoyed it for what it was because I watched it when I was growing up. When they announced Good Burger 2, I was like, oh, like, cool, but this is not going to be good. And guess what? It's fucking awful. But you know what? They know it's fucking awful because it's Good Burger. They're not expecting a Scorsese movie or a Nolan film or a Tarantino film. It's fucking Good Burger. What did you expect? You know, it's like trying to watch SpongeBob for the intellectuals. It's not fucking happening. They're making it for kids. They're making it to be over the top stupid. It's like Ernest, but for, you know, fast food workers. It's written poorly. It's written for idiots. It's not funny. Keenan Thompson's collecting a paycheck. So is Kel Mitchell. But they're having fun with it. Uh, Jillian Bell, once again, pops up. She's having fun with it. But it's nonsensical stupidity for nonsensical stupidity. But it knows it's doing that. It's like getting mad at a spoof movie for being a spoof movie. They're shit. But they know what they're fucking doing, and people are going to pay money to see it. That doesn't make me and Brian hate them any less, but it makes us kind of understand what what did you what did you expect when you wanted to see that? You expect to see a spoof movie. It sucked. You kind of you you knew what you were walking into. It's kind of your own fault. Good Burger Two is that same way. You watched it. I honestly here, here here's the whole thing. I watched Good Burger Two for the sole purpose to not make Fool's Paradise the worst film of the year because I didn't want it to be. And as I was watching, I was like, this is just as bad as Full of Paradise, but I can't excuse Full of Paradise for, for being what it was. And we'll just go into it, because I'm so intrigued by what your number one is now that I actually, let's just get Full of Paradise out of the way. Okay. Um, so my number one, his number two is Full of Paradise. I, I love Charlie Day. We both love Charlie Day. We love Always Sunny in Philadelphia. When we heard he was directing his own film, starring his own movie, we got super excited. And we kind of talked about this already in Disappointments of the Year. Um... I, and this is why it hurts actually more for me for this movie, because I listened to their Always Sunny podcast, which hasn't come back since the writer's strike. I'm missing it deeply. He was so, he's so passionate about this movie. He was talking about it, like, so lovingly, and McElhenney, and, and, uh, wow, why am I blanking on... Glenn Howerton? Yes, Glenn Howerton. I know Dennis. They were both saying, dude, it is so good, which, I mean, they're best friends. They're going to not tell them that it sucks. But I was getting so excited for this because, like, dude, it looks like Charlie put in everything he had into this movie. And he got all these star actors in it. Kate Beckinsale, Jason Sudeikis, fucking Ray Liotta, one of his last films. Uh, Ken Jeong, who I can't stand, but they still got Ken Jeong. So many people. A Adrian Brody. So many people in this movie. And Brian got to see it before I did because where I live, I didn't get it right away. And Brian goes, dude, this is one of the worst films I've, I, of the year, hands down. I'm like, 
no, I refuse to accept that. I refuse to accept that because I don't want it to happen because Charlie Day was so proud of this movie. And I waited. I didn't get to see it until like last month. And I kept telling Brian, I go, you're making my expectations so fucking low that I'm actually going to enjoy this movie. I might not love it, but I'm going to enjoy it. And I finally sat there and watched it. And this movie is so bad. I'm not going to say it's bad technically because it's not like it's shot poorly or anything like that. But the script is awful. The story is so dumb. Like you said, a disappointment. Charlie Day is kind of doing a Charlie Chaplin thing, which I thought was kind of brilliant. Because the one thing that people can knock on Charlie Day is his voice. He's very loud and rah, rah, like Bobcat. Um, Bobcat. Goldwood. Yeah, Goldwyn. And so I was like, he's very much this generation's Bobcat. And it's like his voice is what holds him back. So he's doing a, a role like Charlie Chaplin. Like, this is actually very clever that he's doing this because he doesn't have he has to sell everything through his body and not through his voice, and that could actually help him out. And he's I think the voice is what makes him funny though. So I had I think it was the exact opposite. You took away his biggest tool. But it was one of those things where he's showing that he can do more or with it. He not, tried not, to. Tried to, and I was hoping <laughs> he was going to. And it's he he failed. He he failed. And it it actually it literally legitimately makes me sad. That he failed. And everyone else around him was bad. It's because the script is bad. It's poorly written, which, once again, he, he wrote, he writes Always Sunny, and it's fucking funny. I don't understand what went wrong here. It's, again, Ken Jong is, again, one of the most annoying characters, one of the most annoying actors in Hollywood for me. His character is annoying as fuck, and like you said, he's like the main character in this movie, which, that right there immediately made me hate this movie right from the get-go this movie made me sad it legitimately made me sad uh go go on it was it was sad just because i mean you kind of covered almost everything but for all the reasons you said it was sad because of the potential it had with with charlie day behind it acting and writing and directing and then all of his people all of his friends and people he got involved in this movie it should have been so good which is why it was uh you know so high on a disappointments list as well because you know we, we had high expectations for this kind of thing but the problem is it just didn't deliver. It was it was not just not great. It was painfully unfunny. And and I mean, I spent most of my time, I don't think I laughed a single time. I actually laughed in the movie. I spent most of my time just doing a face palm because I was just like, what what is this? What are they doing? I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly watched most of it because I watched it at home because it was on Hulu or something. It popped mm -hmm. on finally. I spent most of it watching like just I can't I can't believe this is as bad as Brian said it was. Like I was in shock. Yeah. Just watching. Yeah, going I was I was in the theater literally like like every five minutes I'd just be like, oh my gosh, this is. And I I literally started to think I'm I'm like trying to look on the showtime see what's playing in one of the theaters next door so I can just walk into something else instead. But I decided to power through, watch the whole thing. Didn't get any better. Um, and I just I don't understand how it could have been just so bad. And I, and it's I, like I, I feel bad because Charlie Day is probably not going to get another shot anytime soon to be. You I, know, that, and that's the sad thing is that he's probably is morale. <laughs> It's probably so in the shitter now. He's probably like, I'm just gonna do Always Sunny, and not. Well, I, I don't think it will hurt his career as an actor because he's no, been, I don't he's think he's been he's still he's an actor. But as far as things you write or direct anything, yeah. I can't imagine anybody would give him something after this. Um, I hope, I hope they do, and I hope he has a better chance next time because that's what made me sad. Is I don't want him. I don't want this to stop him. I don't. I want him to do more. I just maybe we just need to have someone kind of you know, watch him and make sure he doesn't go. F it's not even that he went full. He went overboard. He didn't. It's just, it was just structurally. It was just very poor and everything. And like you would think with, with the all-star cast around him, some, cause a lot of these people are writers that they would probably just want to, Hey, Charlie, maybe we try some this, maybe we try this and, and stuff. Cause and I, I think by having so many people that he recruited to be in this movie, even just for a scene or two, it just, it felt like a cameo fest and not in a way where it's like, it was fun. It was just like, I, I almost got to the point where I'm like, Oh, he couldn't get anybody to do the movie. So he had to ask his friends to, cause they weren't going to tell him his trip sucks. I don't know. Okay. I got to know what your number one is. Cause clearly it's none of the movies that I saw. Um, um, it I is. It is because you should know what it is because I said, I'm talking about it later. It's theater camp. Oh fuck. I forgot. Okay. Theater camp is the worst movie of the year. He's just on some people's best of list. Well, some people are fucking stupid. People follow <laughs> Hitler too. It doesn't make them right. Okay. 
Just I honestly, honestly, I forgot about theater camp. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, we still haven't talked about that yet. So theater camp should be right up my alley. I mean, I like, I like oh, musical. You were theater. so excited for this movie. I like musical theater, not just musical movies. But I mean, I like stage musical theatrical productions. I watch them all the time, and you know, so I'm like, this should be right up my alley. Um, but I watch this movie, and I just hated this movie. Just actively hated every second of this movie. It's like. The, the the it's done in like the mockumentary style, which adds nothing to the movie at all. By the way, um, so many scenes are are clearly improv, especially with uh, uh Ben mm -hmm. Platt and Molly Gordon. They can't do improv; they're really horribly improv. I wanted every character in this movie to die. I wish it turned into a Friday Thirteenth movie, and somebody came and slashed and killed them all. The kid that would have been an all... amazing, awesome twist. <laughs> oh man, if that had happened, that would have that would made my favorite movie of the year. <laughs> I wanted every kid in this movie to die. I wanted every character in this movie to die. The only person who almost made it watchable for me was uh, Jimmy Tatro. Because um, he's just playing his usual kind of doofus character. Um, but it's like, even he couldn't save this movie. And, and I don't like him anyway, because he's with Zoe Deutsch. So, fuck that guy. <laughs> he's jealous. Brian's <laughs> jealous. Uh, but, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back, because I did enjoy uh, Noah Galvin. I liked I like Noah Galvin. He was like the to me he was the one redeeming quality of the movie for me. Um, yeah, this movie. See, I this movie started to work towards the end for me. It didn't save it. It's still it's, it was an honorable mention for me. But it was it was because the last act started to kind of win me over. But I agree that the beginning of it, I was just like, why are we doing this documentary? Like. I get they, like they explain why they're doing it, but honestly, I, at the but very but, but, but it still it, it doesn't make it it doesn't add anything to the movie. It so it's like, it, why it do they make that? It, the plot it's a the gag. Movie. It's a gag at the end of the yeah. fucking movie. It's, honestly, it's, a, it's a way to disguise amateur filmmaking. Honestly, it is. It is. It wasn't is. it directed by? I think it was directed by Platt and Gordon too, wasn't it? Um, well, it was, Molly, it was Molly Gordon, but it was Nick Lieberman was the other guy. Yeah, but it's like I I, I think a mockumentary like it's it's like the whole found footage thing. Found footage after Blair Witch Project became like a big thing because it was a way for people to make movies cheap and if they didn't have a lot of talent behind the camera. So it's like, and that's what the mockumentary style has kind of become as well. But the characters in this were all just annoying and unfunny. And the reason Fool's Paradise was not a good movie. We've talked, obviously, quite a bit about why it's a bad movie. But Fool's Paradise was just not funny. This one made me actively hate it. And that's why I made it the worst, my worst movie of the year. This, this movie started on the right foot. Because at first we were like, oh, God, Amy Sedaris, because we don't like her. And then they fucking made her have like a heart attack and put her in a coma. We're like, oh, good job. You got her out of the movie quick. Like, it's all like in memoriam, basically, for, for her. It's like, good, you got her out of the way. Now it's people that I like. But then it's like you made them all so unlikable. Ben Platt went from like up here with me for like Pitch Perfect. And then since then has just been tanking himself all the way down well, and with, with him and with molly and everybody else was there a single likable character in this movie glenn, glenn i guess i didn't like hate him. him as much as the other ones but i still he was the one he was the one character in the movie that was actively doing everyone's job he was the one that was actively trying to make everything work he was the real star he had all the skill but no one looked at him because he was a crew guy at the very end of the movie he finally got to shine and he finally got to be the star, and everyone realized that he actually was fucking amazing. He was the one character that made the movie work at the end for me because without his performance and without his, you know, revelation at the end of the movie, I'm mean, like, yeah, this movie just fucking sucks. That's why it went from like one of the worst to honorable mention because his character and Totoro, or not Totoro, how the fuck is Tetra. it? Tetro. Because uh, his character grew as, as we went as well. It was those two that kind of saved well passively saved the movie for me by the end but yeah molly gordon i like molly gordon her character's not likable at all ben platt you just want to punch in the fucking face every chance you saw him and everyone else was just kind of like yeah the kids no, none of the kids were good the acting was bad it was shot poorly but but noah galvin and and uh tetra were I, I, I liked both of them in this movie. They were the saving grace of this movie that, that made it from not being one of the worst films of the year for me, but for just being an honorable mention. Um, clearly that they did not say the way for you. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah, you were you were actively mad about this movie. You the yeah. way you were mad about this movie is the way I felt about the Meg and and other stuff. Cause I oh yeah, no, theater camp. 
I didn't think it was going to be your number one. I thought nothing. You may, you may have seen like Fool's Paradise was locked in at number one. It was not moving no matter what. Uh, to, yeah, you must. Did you rewatch Theater Camp? Is that what jumped it over? Because I didn't think no. I Theater Camp was behind Fool's Paradise. No, it's always been there. My original, my original review on Letterbox said this film did surprise me though because I didn't think I would see a worse movie than Fool's Paradise this year. Oh wow! But they pulled it off. Well, those are our worst films of 2023 that we saw. Like I, like we said at the end, there are some movies out there that are probably way, way worse than what we watched. We were just smart enough not to watch them. These were the ones that we painfully, though, had to watch. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on the Movie Crusaders. Of course, we have to follow us on all the social media you see below. Uh, out right now, we have our most disappointing films of the year. Some of these are mentioned in that. Our most surprising films of the year. And then coming up next, we have our best films of the year, where Brian and I will be talking about the movies that we loved throughout 2023. And then also coming out later in the week will be our most anticipated films of 2024. The, the show where we are so optimistic and excited for what's to come only for us to be here a year from now, talking about them as worst films of the year or disappointments or maybe surprises and best who knows, or just say, yeah, remember that movie. It's not coming out for like three years. Yeah. You know, that's what happens with anticipated, but be here for all that. Uh, happy new year, guys. We're starting into another year of the movie crusaders. Brian and I aren't going anywhere. So hope you guys like our faces comment below. Did we piss you off with our choices? Are there movies that you think were worse? I'm sure you can point out Winnie the Pooh and blood and honey. Obviously we just refuse to watch that. I'm sure we pissed you off with some of our choices. I'm sure theater camp probably pissed you off. I'm sure five nights at Freddy's pissed you off. We don't care. But let us know in the comments below what you guys thought. And check it back with us next time for best films of the year and our most anticipated. Until next time, in case we don't see you, go watch some movies and go have some fun. You're still here. It's over. Go home. <laughs>